Hi everyone, lately, I've noticed that many people, especially parents, are becoming less aware of the risks their children may face. Many parents think, this won't happen to my child. Unfortunately, statistics and probability show that there's a significant chance that inappropriate recordings of your child could exist now or in the future if you're not vigilant. Here are three common places where the risk of your child being filmed in an uncomfortable or even compromising position is high. Swimming pools and beaches, this is our focus right now. 2. At home, via internal network cameras, a video on this topic is linked in the description. 3. Public restrooms, a video on this will be coming soon. When available, the link will be in the description. First and foremost, it's important not to underestimate your child. Talk openly with them about potential dangers, let them know that if they find themselves in an uncomfortable situation, they shouldn't be afraid to speak up, as it's not their fault, they are the victim. And if you encounter such a situation yourself, don't overreact. Under no circumstances should you resort to physical violence. No low life like that is worth risking jail time for. Any public swimming pool or beach could pose a potential risk, not just the changing rooms. Obviously, these are places where kids are dressed lightly and often wet, which can be an enticing situation for the wrong person. That said, this doesn't mean you shouldn't take your child to places like these. Rule number one, never take photos or videos of your child in these places, and don't let anyone else take pictures of them either. Your child should be able to focus solely on having fun and playing, there's really no need to take photos here. It's also important to tell your child not to let anyone photograph them, and if someone does, they should let you know right away. Second rule, Never allow your child to be naked, no matter how young they are. Especially with very young children, it's common to let them run around without clothes. But this can pose serious health risks. Think about it, without protection, their genital area could come into direct contact with contaminants. This is especially dangerous for girls, as harmful substances can immediately enter the body through the vaginal area, which could include waste, decaying matter, and so on. For boys, although the risk of direct contamination is lower, their genitals are still exposed to injury. Would you want your son bitten by an ant, a spider, or some other unpleasant creature? Don't let them go without clothes, at the very least. Put on a small pair of shorts. Furthermore, it's a potential resource for predators. Needless to say, even an innocent photo can quickly make its way onto the dark web. The solution is simple. Make sure your child is wearing bottoms. Here's another helpful tip. When you're going somewhere public for a swim, don't let your child wear underwear instead of a swimsuit, as it turns see-through when wet. This is especially common among boys 12 and older, who often think it's fine to just swim in their underwear because they didn't feel like packing swim trunks. Let them know it's not fine. If necessary, always keep a spare swimsuit set in the car, especially if your son loves swimming. The risk isn't only outside but also inside the changing rooms, and often, it's even higher there. There are generally two types of changing rooms, those with a large, open area where everyone changes together, and those with individual stalls or cubicles. Although the cubicle-style room may seem safer, it actually isn't. Let's start with the open area changing room. By its very nature, this type of space puts boys especially at risk. While not all pedophiles are men, the majority are, and a surprising number of them have a preference for boys. This has nothing to do with being gay. It's more a crisis of identity or a mental illness rather than a matter of sexual orientation. I won't go into that here. In these types of changing rooms, boys are primarily at risk, but it's not impossible for female offenders to be present too. There are several reasons for this, but I won't get into that now. If you're interested, I could make a separate video on this topic. You're in a particularly difficult position in places like this if, as a mother or woman, you're taking a boy over 8 to the pool, he can't go into the women's changing room with you, but you also can't go into the men's with him. The same issue applies to fathers taking daughters. If you're in this situation, I recommend telling your child to finish as quickly as possible, avoid starting conversations with anyone, if there's an unattended bag nearby, change with their back to it, and most importantly, if they feel unsafe, they should leave immediately. They can finish changing in a toilet or somewhere else, you'll be able to figure it out together. Their safety is far more important. Let's go back to such dressing rooms. The good news is that it's much more noticeable if someone is trying to record in these areas, as anyone lingering for a long time will stand out. For this reason, even an unattended bag, a scarf, or a hat hanging on a locker can pose a potential risk. If someone has their own locker, why wouldn't they store everything inside? There's also the possibility that a camera could be hidden, for example, through the locker's vent, but this takes a lot of effort. Unless it's someone working there, it's almost impossible for them to set this up. Unfortunately, Spotting this kind of setup is nearly impossible. However, there are potential areas to watch for. 
You don't need to search the entire changing room, just check spots that offer a clear view of the room. Here's also the possibility of an unattended bag left behind. Of course, its owner might still be around, but if they are, it's usually pretty obvious. Or maybe not, some are very skilled at pretending, but if you pay attention, you can quickly spot it. A suspicious bag and owner might show these signs, they're likely there before you arrive. They appear to be dressing very slowly, they occasionally glance over at the boys, even if just briefly, they rarely touch their bag, and when they do, they don't actually seem to be doing anything with it. They might look like they're not paying attention to anyone, but if the boys do something funny, they smile or react. What can you do about these bags? If the owner isn't around, move it slightly, or change its angle. Don't look inside, as they might accuse you of theft or worse, and besides, there may not even be a camera in there. If the person is present, try placing something between their bag and the kids, your own bag, a coat, or even yourself. Trust me, they're not interested in you, and it's better for you to end up on any recording than your child. It's a big red flag if the person then moves their bag, keeping the same side facing the kids. This is almost a sure sign, but just keep doing what you were doing before. Never forget, you can do far more harm by accusing an innocent person than by failing to catch a guilty one. Even if you're 1000% sure, don't confront them in front of the children. Also, a cornered offender can be very dangerous. Leave it to the authorities, taking matters into your own hands is a crime. More tips, finish the getting dressed as quickly as possible. If it's not very important, skip the shower and do it at home. If the boy has an erection, don't touch him or show. Tell him this at home too. If there are several boys, don't react to each other, especially to each other's genitals. Let them try to stay serious. Although it may seem like this location is very dangerous because it is potentially easy to take pictures of children, this is not true. The serious threat is not here, because it is precisely the openness of this place that makes it difficult to peep, especially to take good pictures. The other location, the changing room with a cabin, can be misleading. You might think that it is safer, but this is very much not true. In these changing rooms, boys are no longer the sole targets. However, in many ways, they are even more vulnerable to the risks here. I'll explain why in a moment. I know this might seem con contradictory. Your first task is to enter the changing room your child will be using and have a look around yourself. The cubicles with walls reaching from floor to ceiling are the safest, but even here, it's worth taking a look around. Always check to see if the seat is clean, if there is a sex magazine on it. If there is, immediately report it to a worker, because this is a 100% sure sign. Because the purpose of these sex magazines is for young boys to go in, read it and get an erection. This is the best and most brutal desire a pedo wants. If you see this, it is a clear sign. Even more, there is almost certainly a camera, either now or later. Look around under the seat, look around in the neighboring cabins if you can. Don't be afraid of your knees. Look under the cabin in every direction. See if the walls are intact. If there is a hole in it, look for one where there is none. Or keep an eye on the cabin from which you can see through here. It is important to educate your son. Tell him that if he finds a sex magazine in the cabin, he should immediately report it to you or someone. It's also possible that the pedophile will slip the magazine over later, when the child is already inside. More important rules to tell your children. Focus on getting dressed, do it as quickly as possible. Never masturbate. Never send children of the opposite sex into a cabin. Do not get dressed with a child older than 10 years old especially if they are of the opposite sex. Do not let your daughter leave her pads or tampons there. Wrap them up carefully and throw them outside. If children of the same sex are going in, especially if they are boys, do not hold each other. Feel free to hurry them up. If there are multiple parents, take the cubicles next to the kids and change there. If you're alone with the kids, change quickly yourself first. Then, while your child is changing, keep an eye on what's happening in the neighboring cubicles. Watch their feet to make sure nothing suspicious is being passed under the walls. The things I've said might sound complex at first, but I'm actually talking about two to three minute things. Listen and see, that's the most important thing and not to make your child look stupid. Communicate with you and never make him feel he has to hide anything from you. If you talk through these things with your child, he will know them later on his own and even when he goes to training camp or on a school trip, he can pay attention to them. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it subscribe, like and if you like you can support my work with super thanks.